with the rest of the session. So today we're going to look at uh, the fundamental things like uh, <coughs> okay so welcome back to the UFT class. Today we're going to look at uh, the scripting concepts like how you're going to do the, the scripting like how you're going to develop the test. So what are the approaches like what we follow in reality and why. What are the approaches and uh, how we log the test result. And here like you're going to learn two important concepts, object repository based test and then the descriptive programming. Because this very important concept, in reality the object based recording or war based script has some issues then how you how you overcome those issues while you develop the test that's what you're going to learn today and then how you're going to log your test results and then how to control the test execution how to control the test execution okay so before uh, we start, uh, this is what maybe if you know the answer you can respond. As the automation tested, what are the prerequisites you need before you develop the test, before you start developing the scripts? What are the prerequisites that you so Suppose like uh, you join a, a, a project as an automation tester, right? And then the company say, okay, we, uh, this is a web application. Okay, it's a web application. Something like say, something like this, they say it's a travel application, something. Okay, they say. And then they're going to ask, okay, what is your approach? How you develop your scripts? And before you develop, what are the prerequisites? What you look for? This is our application, and this is this is where you're you're going to develop some automation scripts to test this application. What are the prerequisites to start your scripting? What kind of prerequisites you're looking for? I mean, what you need to start developing the test. what you need or what your expectations what you can expect from that project or what is required uh, okay so here I got a response from Carol saying that uh, excellent so that is one require one requisite right obviously you should know what is the requirements or sometimes you're going to look at the manual test cases. You're going to look at the manual test cases. That is one requirement, right? Then what's the next one? You need a, like most of the typical projects you have these manual test cases ready. And you're looking for the manual test cases and then see what to automate, how you develop the test. Then what is the second requirement? Or what is the prerequisite? Okay, Sonal is saying uh, whether it supports the browser. Excellent, right? So whatever the tool that you're using, it supports the browser, right? Because it's a web application, obviously you have to look at whether it supports the browser or in other words, like you can say whether the tool will support this application, right? Whether this application can be automated. Excellent. So that's what Radhika is saying. 
whether the application can be automated. Okay. So the 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 other things uh, obviously you're going to look at um, system must be stable. Okay. So I will say application must be stable, right? Before you develop the test. Excellent. Another thing that you want to add? Another things that you want to add? This is what actually I need before I start developing the test, right? Before I start developing on this automation project. So this is what I need. Do you have anything in your mind or is this enough? Okay, excellent. So let's go with this. Like whatever you said, uh, seems to be that's, uh, that's more than enough, right? Uh, let's uh, let's start with this. Okay, so you will get some manual test cases, right? You will get say, some manual test cases that's uh, developed on the project, and then how are you going to automate that? Given that manual test case, okay, I'm going to put some simple test case here, right? Say the test case uh, name. And then um, description, then the step, <coughs> expect a result, and actual result. Okay, so this, this is what actually you, you will get um, part of your the manual testing, right? This is what your expectations. So, for example, like the manual testers they did, um, how they prepared this, how they prepared, how they're going to prepare the manual test cases based on? Based on the functional requirements. Okay, so based on the functional requirements, right? They're going to look at the requirements, what it says, and they're going to come up with these test cases. So here it says, uh, obviously the requirement is something, um, so you'll get in the project, um, open application, and then like home page should display, and then on home page, User clicks, sign on link to display the login page. Then on login page, login successful with a valid username and password. And if user enters invalid username or password, it should display an error. I'm not saying that invalid username or password. So this part actually you get the requirements. Right? This one of the project requirements. Based on these, so you're going to uh, I mean, like why why I'm saying here this stuff is sometimes not every project is going to have separate uh, people. Sometimes you will get a responsibility to play an all-rounder role, right? Then in that case, you will be playing the responsibilities of uh, manual tester as well as automation tester. Then sometimes you're going to look at the requirements like this, and then you can prepare your test case also. So here, like, um, how you're going to do this, like, I'm, I'm writing just uh, simple the valid login, but don't worry about the invalid login and that stuff. That gives uh, an idea. So you're going to um, put the description something, say, login, test login functionality. Mm -hmm. 
then you're going to put the steps, right? So, okay, so this is the step one, open app. And then you also mention how you're going to open up your cache. Probably sometimes you're going to prepare your data part of the step, or sometimes you can do this one separate, right? It all depends how you want to do it. Some projects, they put the data part of the test case, and sometimes you'll get this, uh, you're going to write generic test case, and then you can put separate test data. So whatever the, it is, uh, this part, like you're going to do this, and then then here you're expecting uh, something like the as per the requirements it says uh, the home page should display and move on to the second step in the same test case and you're going to click sign on link then what are the expectations uh, so the, again, the requirement says, once you click this sign a link, so you're expecting the login page should display, right? So you do the same thing here, login page should display. Then move on to the third step. And here you're going to put now, okay, the login page is displayed, right? We did uh, these two steps. Open application login page display on home page username, clicks on sign on, then the login page to display on login page, users should be able to log in with a successful username and password. So that's your second step, uh, sorry, the third step. Enter the username and password. So what are the username and password you're going to put? And then here you're expecting login successful. Okay, so this is the third one. And the fourth step is you're going to close app. So this is your manual test case, right? Based on based on this requirement. Right? Based on this requirement. So you are going to have this kind of test case. This is a a a valid login test case, but you're going to have something like invalid login. So you're going to write down a step uh, um, you're going to write down a step to do this invalid login, right? You did valid login and you're going to do invalid login, that's a separate test case, okay? So, once you do these things, right? Once you do the valid and invalid login test cases, this is this is one prerequisite, pre-requirements for your automation. Then obviously you're going to look at whether your tool supports whatever the application, like it's a web application, how you're going to check whether your tool supports the browser or not, say whether the EFT tool supports the browser, how you're going to check what you need, what you need here in order to make sure whether you are able to record the test using this UFT tool against this application, what you need. Because we got the first requirement, right? We got the first uh, prerequisite. We have the requirements ready, and we have the manual test cases ready. Then the second prerequisite is, you're going to look at whether your the tool really supports this application. How you check? Okay, excellent. So here I got an answer from Deepa saying that you're going to look at add-ins, right? You're going to look at what type of add-in you need to test this web application. What type of add-in you need to test this application. In this case, what type of add-in you are going to look at? Because say, it's a web, web application. Okay, all right, so got an answer from Kala saying that uh, web adding. 
Right? That's it. So if you have the web add-in, probably the EFT tool is going to work against that application. And then what is this? Okay, so you got the requirements, you got the manual test cases ready, and you also got this web add-in. Right? The moment you start uh, the EFT, right? So okay, let me start the EFT tool. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to I'm, I started UFT. And then, so what is the first window that you see when you start UFT? When you start UFT, what is the startup window you see? Um, the license check. Okay. So you'll get the license check, uh, the version. Anyway, this is called the flash screen, like where it's going to show you the uh, the version and everything. And then, probably like what Carol mentioned, like you might be seeing the license check, right? This is the kind of the license check what you see. So in reality, anyway, you're going to look at uh, what are the regular version you're going to use in the project. But uh, in our, uh, these classes, like, you know, you're going to use the trial version. So we're going to hit this continue button. But we're going to talk about what kind of licenses you will get in real projects and how you use those licenses that we're going to discuss later. But in this case, like, we're going to talk, discuss, just click continue button and then you should be able to use this uh, trial version for your education purpose. And um, this what uh, the window, right? The add-in manager. So this is where your second prerequisite comes. So you have to make sure whatever the application you are testing, you are going to ensure the right add-in select from this add-in manager. So here I have a question. Okay, so you are saying like the web add-in is required. Suppose if I select everything, all add-ins, can I do that? Suppose you are testing just the web application, all you need is just the web add-in. But if I check all add-ins in this add-in manager, can I develop the test this way? Or anything wrong? No, you don't. Uh, it will slow down. Okay, good, good. So Sonali is saying uh, it will slow down, right? That's what if you look at this red colored mark here for optimal performance and object identification reliability, select only the add-ins you need. That means, see, you are testing a web application where you need the other add-ins. Right? That doesn't make any sense. Suppose if you select all add-ins, then what happens is the UFT is going to take more time to recognize your application because UFT don't UFT will take more time now, right? Whether you are testing web application or a Java application or a Visual Basic application, it's going to take more time. So that way, in order to improve the performance, right? How you record or how you run your test. So all you have to do is test here. Check only the web add-in, okay? You're going to check only the web add-in what you need for this application, okay? You're going to check only the web add-in because that is the that's the one just you need, right? Select that web add-in and you're going to hit OK button. Okay, so that is the next one. 
obviously Samar mentioned application must be stable before you develop the test what it really means what it really meant application must be stable anybody what do you mean by application must be stable before we develop the test uh, when you test uh, yes when you test manually the number of bugs was not too high correct right what it means by application stable in the sense say you do some manual testing right before you do automation and remember automation is not a replacement for manual testing still you are going to do some kind of manual testing and when you do manual testing right so you're getting a lot of issues right you're testing this application right so you're testing the application and you're getting a lot of issues then that doesn't make any sense to develop automation scripts first you should manually test it and make sure there are no issues and that, that that login functionality is stable and it's working without any issues then probably you can go about automation then you can develop the automation script otherwise you're getting a lot of issues when you're testing the login application right are the developers keep changing the application the developers keep changing the login functionality then you have to change your test also right every time so that is the reason once the functionality that particular functionality is stable enough right the bugs are very minimal or no bugs then probably you can go with developing the test for that functionality okay so the, the prerequisites now you have the prerequisites ready is that clear What are the prerequisites? Do you have any questions? Okay. One thing is you should have the requirements of the manual tickets ready. And the second one is you should make sure you have the right add-in available with EFT in order to develop the test on that application. And the third thing is like you have to make sure the application, the functionality is stable. Then you are going to develop the test, right? Okay, so now we are going to look at this manual test cases. So this is the, the UFT anyway. So you are going to develop a new test. Okay, just I am going to give the test name as uh, the login, uh, whatever the manual test case name, most of the time you are going to give the same as your test name because you are developing automation test for the same, the test case, right? So you can mention um, login test case, that is the script name. Okay, so you have to mention the login test case, that is the test name, and just say create. So, it's okay. So now when we are developing a test given this manual test case, right? So you know the steps, right? You're going to open application and then home page to display. You're going to click on sign on link, login page to display, and you're going to enter username and password, login successful. And then finally you're going to close application how you do this test. Now I'm going to record as this application.
So this is my test. So now I start with the recording, record the test. Okay, just uh, click on this uh, record button. So click on this uh, record. And this is the application, like I'm following the steps mentioned in the manual test case in order to develop my test. So the first step is you, have to, you are going to open application. Obviously you have to mention what are that application URL and you are testing the web application. You go to this web tab and then mention the application URL. Okay. And then you're going to hit OK button. So that now is, the UFT is going to open the application. And you start with uh, just follow those steps, right? First step is you have to open the application, and the second step is click on this sign-on link, and the third step is you're going to enter the username and password. And click submit. And first step is you're going to close this application in the browser instance, right? That's how you're going to record your test. So this is your test. See, so this, this, this is the test, right? Just open the application. The first step is click on sign on, enter username, password, click login, and finally you're going to close your application. So now, so I'm going to put the steps also, just very clear, your step, your test script should be very clear, like what are the steps that you did from your manual test case, right? So this is the first step, open application, and you're going to click sign on link, that's the step two. So this is called the commenting, in order to do the comment in your test, this is a very important thing also. How you do commenting is you're going to put single quote. Okay, if you put single quote, then the things will appear in the green color. That is just the plain English. For in UFT, say for example here, you're going to say, you're going to write just the English, like right? click on sign on link. So that whenever you run that test, the UFT will understand this is just the English. This is not the test. Well, this is a test, right, where it's going to click sign on link. That way you have to provide as much commenting as possible. That way you can better understand your test. Even when you look at your test tomorrow, you can easily understand what these different steps are doing in my test. Okay, and this is step two. Right, you're going to enter username, comma password, and click login. Right, there are the three steps. And the next one, this is step three. It's going to close the application. Right, this is the login test, how you record it against your manual test case. Okay, is this clear? Given any manual test case, how you are going to record your test? Any questions? Okay, so now, okay, so you did uh, this part, right? You did uh, the steps. And you're going to look at now, 
what is this verification part? And then how you log your test results. So you have to check, right? Your test also check these, these, these things. When you open the application, your test has to check the home page is displayed or not. How to do that verification in your test? So the verifications you can do even later. See, basically, like if you look at this active screen, right? If you look at this active screen tab, you will get the the snapshots are captured. See, this is the this is the first screen, right? Where you get this sign on and everything. You just check whether the home page is displayed or not. How are you going to check it? You can insert different checkpoints. You can insert checkpoints. So, the, like you can say, how the home page is displayed. So, when I see this logo, then that confirms the home page is displayed. How you how you verify this? You right click and then insert a bitmap checkpoint. Right, you're going to do the checkpoints just to see. Okay, the logo is displayed. That confirms the home page. This particular application home page is displayed with the logo. So you're going to insert. Right click on this logo. Right click on this image, and then insert bitmap checkpoint. Then you'll get this bitmap checkpoint properties window, and you're going to hit OK button. So you see the bitmap is captured and click OK. So now you see there's a checkpoint that is uh, captured here, right? So what is going to do? Check the home page is displayed with logo. That way that completes the first step, right? You open the application and you checked the logo is displayed and then probably like you can move this uh, comment here and then you start with uh, you open the application and you're checking the home page displayed this is the first checkpoint and the next step you're doing click on this sign on link so once you click on this sign on link what is that page you, you expect this logon page, right? This is the logon page. See the sign on page. This is the next page. Again, how are you going to verify this one? So again, say if you look at this uh, welcome Mercury tools, right? This is the sign on page, right? So you want to verify after you click sign on link whether you got this page or not. So for that, you're going to do again. If you want to verify the text, right? Before you verify this logo, now we want to verify the page on this, the text on this login page. So you can also do this um, using just right click, and then you can also insert a text checkpoint. Then you'll get um, the text and everything, and hit OK. So that you see the text checkpoint is inset. So that way you are going to verify. So this is the text that is going to check. Okay, so this is check the login page is displayed. That's the other checkpoint. Sorry, I think uh, I did output value. One sec. Uh, yeah, just here to do this text checkpoint. I selected text output. Okay, so this is the text checkpoint. So that way you got that uh, text checkpoint. Okay, so that's not the correct one. Okay, so that way you can do different checks in your test, right? How all the things are verified. Then after this, just you want to make sure the login 
sign on page is displayed, right? Then you're going to look at um, how they sign up page, then you're going to do one more checkpoint for that. This way you, you can do the steps recording and you can also verify each and every step what you're expecting. That is where you're going to use the checkpoints. Yes, uh, Carol, coming to your question, you can do the checkpoints either at the time of recording, even after recording. Okay, so you can do either way. Um, just you're going to look at like what are the steps, right? So obviously you're going to verify the home page should display, right? You're going to verify the home page should display before sign on link. That's where you have to insert the checkpoint before that. Similarly, before you enter username, um, you have to verify, you have to verify the sign on link. Before you enter the username, you have to check the page is displayed. So you're going to look at um, where you're going to verify and put those checkpoints at the appropriate places. So that is how you're going to develop the test. Right? You record your test and then you can insert different checkpoints. So whenever you run this test, now it's going to verify that your test is ready, now you're going to execute. Okay, so that's it, the test is executed and they're done the execution, you will get the results. That's going to tell oral status of your test, right, whether it's a pass or fail. And also it's going to show you if you expand these results, then it's going to show you wherever you see this green tick mark, it's going to show you all those uh, checkpoints, like this is the first checkpoint, the bitmap, it passed. And the next one, it says like it's going to verify this welcome mercury tools, the text. There's the text checkpoint that is also passed. That way now, once you develop this test, you're going to run this test again and again, right? On different builds. You're going to run this test, run the same test. Part of your regression testing, right? So what is the what is the regression testing? So the regression testing is something you're going to run the test again and again. You create one time, but you're going to run the test again and again this week, next week, or next month, next year. You run the same test. That way, every time when you run the test, it's going to verify whether the bitmap is displayed, same as before, or you're getting the text, same as before on the application. If something like anything that is failed here, right? If say it says like the hey, text checkpoint is failed, that means this particular text is not displayed on that application. That is a regression issue. So we have to report those issues to the development team, like why the things are changing on the application. Okay, so this is the concept like how you're going to develop the test based on the object repository. Okay. Clear any questions? Uh, why we use checkpoint? Checkpoint is mainly to verify. Um, to verify, like see, checkpoints are mainly useful when you look at your manual test cases, right? So what it's saying here, the moment you open the application, you should see the home page should display. So how you how your test is going to verify? See, manually if you want to do it, how you do it? So suppose, suppose like uh, you don't have the automation scripts, you don't have the EFT, nothing, right? You're doing some manual testing. Um, when you do this manual testing, right, then obviously now we're going to run this. So open the application. Uh, now you're going to open this application. Now 
now you are doing the manual execution okay now what you're expecting home page should display now we're going to check whether you got the home page displayed or you are seeing any errors here okay now you got the home page displayed right now we are checking with your eyes right whether you got the home page or not but so if something like you are doing the automation scripts how the EFT is going to verify this one right when you do manual testing you can verify with your eyes and then check and then you're going to put here results saying that actual result is yes home page is displayed but how the EFT will understand the EFT, your home page is displayed or not that is where you're going to insert a checkpoint here hey go and check whether you got the home page displayed with this logo or not that's what the test does and stuff you do it manually the test is going to verify that okay is it uh, clear uh, Saleha um, uh, okay so if you want me to add one more checkpoint so simple like say for example here I want to um, check here like in addition to this logo on this uh, I want to verify this text is displayed right on the home page I need to verify this text is displayed um, yeah you can also do this uh, while recording also probably like I'm going to do the recording the other way also okay so let's do this uh, test here and then I do recording at the time of recording how you can insert these checkpoints now I did after you record right now let me explain because I got here a couple of questions can we do these checkpoints with recording yes you can also do that okay start with record this is the new test start with record and here you're going to say the first step open application right and then click OK so this is the application now we are going to do the checkpoints right what is the first checkpoint you need to check whether the login is displayed uh, sorry whether the home page is displayed properly so for that you now you get all the checkpoints from this drop down list see here you will get all the checkpoints now again you do the same thing right you can select the bitmap checkpoint you can select the bitmap checkpoint and then click on this uh, top of this bitmap on top of this image so you will get bitmap checkpoint and hit OK now it shows how the bitmap is captured and hit OK so you're done with first step right you open the application and you verified the home page is displayed or not then now we move on to the second step click on this sign on link now we're going to check whether this sign on page is displayed or not for that you can use the text checkpoint right select this text checkpoint from this drop down list again select this text checkpoint and you're going to click on this text like welcome welcome back to Mercury Tools so that you see now it's going to highlight that text what you want to verify in a red color and click OK so you're done with second step now move on to the third step enter username enter the password and click the submit button now you want to verify the login is successful for that again you're going to check whether this uh, find a flight page is displayed right then only you can check the login is successful so for that you're going to verify text checkpoint Select text checkpoint again and you're going to click on this text 
You see, now the text is highlighted, what you want to verify. Okay, and click OK. So you're done with third step. The first step is you're going to close your browser instance. Stop recording. This is your test, like with uh, the checkpoints also. So that way you can, suppose sometimes what happens, you forget one one checkpoint, right? When, you're, when you record, you forget one checkpoint. Then your question is, do you have to re-record the whole script again? No, right? Just all you have to do is look at these snapshots. These are the active screens, right? And you can insert any checkpoints. Just right click and then you will get all those options here. So that way you should know either way how you can do recording. Or, sorry, how you can do these checkpoints at the time of recording or even after recording. Is that clear? Okay, so that's all like you're going to verify these um, checkpoints. Um, then we're going to look at uh, the next uh, topic is uh, descriptive programming. Like this is uh, basically it's, uh, it's going to verify all the checkpoints, right? It's going to verify all the checkpoints and everything whenever you run the test. This is the object, the, the whenever just you record this test. Um, okay, so let, uh, we are going to discuss all those topics later because given one hour class, output values, this thing, that thing, it's difficult to cover, okay? Don't worry, we're going to discuss every topic in later part of these classes. Um, okay, so this is the basic test and this is the basic, the record and playback, what you do while you develop the test, right? And there are some, some scenarios where this uh, recorded script may not work properly. That is where you're going to use the descriptive programming. So what are the scenarios? Why we use the descriptive programming? That is my next topic. Okay, so that is all from uh, today. Uh, here I'm getting uh, some questions like uh, what will be, again, I'm not sure whether it is you, it is covered, but anyway, um, I'm going to show you one more time the syllabus, like what is covered here, and then if you have any questions you can you just uh, ask me. So this one actually, for those of who asked this question, like what is covered here in this course, this is what like we're going to cover um, the test planning, the, the automation concepts initially, and then uh, we're going to go through this. Um, we understand just a little bit here what's the add-ins and then what what are the different licenses you get in the projects and how you use those licenses, then how you use these uh, actions, reusable actions, what are the different parameter types in UFT, then output values, data tables, synchronizations, so we're going to discuss these things, data table methods, debugging, then we talked uh, just, the, just uh, the basic checkpoints, but there are very important checkpoints like the, <coughs> sorry, page checkpoints, image checkpoints, accessibility XMLs, how you test your web services, API testing, that also you're going to learn, the recovery scenarios, how the UFT will identify those objects, how you develop your test, how you create shared object repositories, how you do the descriptive programming, then what are different test methods, what are different recording modes, that way, the initial nine to 10 sessions will be focused on understanding the UFT tool that includes the basics and advanced features. Then you're going to learn the VB scripting uh, from scratch, like what is VB script, 
how you use the VB script when you develop the test, then what are arrays, the date, time functions, string functions, the control statements, like if else conditions, so for loops, do well, that comes under the control statements. Then you're going to learn the VB script objects, file system objects, Excel, dictionary and database objects. Automation object model. So that way, again, another six to seven sessions, we're going to focus on the VB scripting, understanding the VB script. Then after that, you're going to learn the framework. Like with this knowledge, with VB script and EFT knowledge, so you should be able to work on the framework. What is framework and how you develop the framework? What are the coding standards? Then what are different uh, frameworks like the data-driven, keyword-driven, and then um, how you're going to integrate um, this uh, QC and uh, QTP? How you're going to integrate the test, run the test from quality center? Then you're going to have um, the practice on the framework. Then we do some mock mock sessions. What are the frequent asked questions? Then how you answer those questions? That's all. Like these sessions will be around 20, 21 sessions, and each session is two hours duration. And part of this, you will get uh, the class notes, like what I'm typing, right? What I'm writing. So you will get all that class notes. So no need to write on anything. Every at the end of every class, you will get that class notes, and also you'll get the recordings. Then you'll get the assignments. So that way, you should you should work on those assignments. That way, we do these classes alternate days. So you will get your time to work on this assignment. Okay. Then, if you have any issues to work on those assignments, right? Then I'm going to look at your script issues. Then I should be able to help you to understand what the wrong you did in your test that way you learn the things. Okay. So these are the things and my expectations are you should you should complete those assignments and come back in the following class. And any kind of the, um, the general questions like Mike is the point of contact, you can send him an email. So for any, uh, what's the fee and uh, how you can enroll for these classes. So Mike is the point of contact. Okay. So that's about uh, the class, the syllabus and uh, how we do these sessions. All right, now I'm open for any questions you have. And here, like, uh, I'm getting a couple of people, like, uh, asking, like, to unmute the phone. So during the session, it's difficult to unmute your phones because it's going to disturb the others. Um, that's why during this lecture, all your phones are muted. I hope uh, um, everybody attended this even before the classes, right? Uh, maybe maybe some of you or some of may not be, but how this class is going on is uh, during the lecture, not your phones are unmuted, all your phones by default muted. So like how everybody is doing, the interaction, that's a good thing. Only thing is you're going to communicate any questions, issues through the chat panel, chat window. That is how like you can communicate so that I, I'm able to answer your questions. It's not over phone, it is uh, through questions panel and this uh, go to webinar. Okay. Otherwise, um, if I unmute your phones, the problem is we get a lot of echo and then you don't hear my voice, that mess up the session. But good thing is everybody is communicating in this questions panel. Okay, any other questions?
Okay, so for next class, uh, uh, I want uh, you to develop the same script and uh, okay, um, so yes, yes, so you're going to um, you did um, so you make sure like you have this UFT installed, everybody. Okay, talk to tech support and they will they will help you to install this tool. Okay. You send you send an email to tech support so that um, they will help you to install the UFT tool. Yes, I mentioned that the, we're going to cover the UFT and uh, um, quality center integration. Yes, we do that. Yeah, basically those are the different versions like the QC or QTP or ALM or EFT to the different versions like one is the old version the new version the concept is same. So we're going to look at the definitions okay um, we, I, I'm going to write down all the definitions in the next page add-in and then why we need add-in because here just I gave you today at high level like uh, what is required but we're going to give, I'm going to give you the definitions in the next class, okay? So we'll go through these and then I'm going to give the definitions also. You send them an email so that they will respond, tech support people, and they will, they will send you the timings and then just for your convenient time, just you can discuss with them so that they're going to help you to install the tool. Uh, the course content, yes, you will get the course content, uh, Gautami, um, by email. So once I get your email list, so you will get it. Uh, next question. Does the tool um, installed? Uh, yes, that's what you're going to use. The you're going to use that um, the evaluation copy, the trial version but tech supports are going to tell you on that. Okay. Okay, so any more questions? Okay, for next class, uh, just I want you to be familiar with how you can record and then do the checkpoints like how we did today. Okay, do that practice. Try to understand this basic functionality of this tool. Okay, uh, probably like once I get uh, your emails, I'm going to send this class notes what I did today. Um, just look at this manual test case and try to develop the test for this. Okay, I will send this one by email. Okay, um, any other questions before we close this session? Yeah, initially we're doing one hour sessions, but uh, we're going to fetch them to two hour sessions later on, but initially it will be one hour probably this week and, and early next week also. Okay.
but regular classes will be two hours. So you will get uh, the schedule from Mike. Okay, so you will get the schedule from Mike. So he's going to send out uh, the schedule and. Okay, Radhika, is this clear? Okay. Do you have any questions? Okay. Okay, so I hope you enjoy the sessions. Then we'll see you in the next class. Okay. Got to me, I think there is some problem from your internet because you are coming on and off. So if there is a problem, maybe what I suggest is try to fix your internet issues. Like you're logging off and then logging back again. Uh, I'm seeing uh, that stuff. Then you lose the things. So please uh, fix those issues, your internet or something. Because sometimes you are, if you disconnect this webinar and then joining back again, I noticed that even in today's session also. So please make sure. What I do, so that's what, uh, who said that? Tech support people, who said that to contact inspector? Why they are saying that? Because here, um, nothing too much, not much from my from my side, right? It's something like you see, maybe your internet is running slow or something, or your internet is disconnecting. That's why you are disconnecting from this webinar also. Okay, anyway, so please make sure this next time um, those things are working so that um, so that uh, you don't have this kind of issue so that you will catch up the things. Not getting responses, you're not asking any questions. You all, all you're simply saying is hello, hello, hello. Okay, everybody is asking the questions in the webinar, in the chat, in the application, pa in the chat panel, in the questions panel. If you say well, hello means, okay, I, I take it like, okay, it's a casual greeting, right? Saying that hello. If you type your question, then I'm able to answer your question. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, next time fix that to fix your uh, just to make sure your internet and everything is working. Then type your question in the questions panel. Okay. That way I'm able to answer. Okay. Hi, I guess uh, any other questions from my others? All right, so we'll see you in the next class. Thank you. Bye and good night.